All right, my friends. Hey, welcome everybody. I am thankful that you're joining me here on my channel. And my name is Marcos. I am the king of Overstay Road. And it's been quite a while since I've done anything on my cooking show. All right, we've been traveling, we've been drinking, we've been partying like rock stars. We've been rolling on the Overstay Road. All right, dodging the visa expiration dates, all that shit, right? But uh, I do love doing my cooking show. I've had a lot of requests. Hey man, get back to doing your cooking show. If some of you don't like the cooking show, hey, I got it. Uh, you can pick another video, plenty on here. But I do like cooking. I am a great cook. And when I get down with my magical wooden spatula, there's no telling what kind of deliciousness is coming out of my kitchen, all right? So today, I got a special treat for you. Folks, a while back, we ran across this little stoneware. It's a, a little electric grill. Now, if you saw the video from when I was down in Leyte, in Ormuk City, me and my old lady bought this little grill. It was a little Chinese, cheap-ass grill. It was like $9, $10. And I was cooking pork chops on my balcony. And what happened, uh, long story short, that damn thing had a short in it, and I almost died over cooking some damn pork chops. I mean, I hit it with a metal, I had a metal spatula, and I hit that thing and it had a short, and it shocked the piss out of me. 220 volts, uh, you know, just like getting hit by a fucking bolt of lightning. So I don't recommend you buy any $10 grill made and designed in China. I mean, everything's made in China, but this son of a bitch was, was designed in China. You don't want no shit designed in China. You want something designed somewhere else, and then you tell them how to make it. But anyhow, I had that $10 grill, and I kept poking them pork chops and feeling a little jolt when I was uh, when I was cooking. But I finally made contact with that metal spatula, and it, 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 damn, it damn shocked the piss out of me. So anyhow, we ran across this one, a little bit better quality, obviously a lot more expensive. But we had to pick it up because, you know, I do like to grill. I'm going to grill out on the balcony. This thing's kind of portable so we can take it with us. And so we picked it up. And without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and show you this little unit right here. So I'll, just, I'll just show you. Now, folks, it didn't come with this. this. This is my beloved wooden spatula. It's been with me for a while. This thing right here has traveled the globe and made a lot of deliciousness. But this is what it came with here. You got this uh, nice little cooking area for the meat. Sort of like a George Foreman type grill, but this this is a, what's it called stoneware. So you got the grease, grease drop down in there. And shit, it's brand new. Let me take the tape off of it here, folks. And I'm gonna show you this grease trap. You got a little grease trap right there. Pretty simple, right? Should be easy, easy cleanup. Let me figure out. I'll get this sandwich back in there. Wait. There we go, right. There we go, right there. So I was putting it in the wrong hole. Sometimes, it, sometimes it happens like that. So what you do? This right here is for. Obviously, I can I can fry some eggs, put some vegetables there, or you know, put the meat over here. Come with this nice little scraper. And the power unit, and of course over here on this side of the globe, a lot of times you end up with this uh, that type of plug. It doesn't fit this modern building, but luckily we do have a power strip. So hopefully the power strip is going to have enough amps to, uh, to power this rig right here. And this thing's this thing is a uh, dishwasher safe, evidenced by this thing. Looks like it's it's this is a quality piece of equipment. That damn nine dollar shit that I bought down in Leyte, that was a damn death trap. I almost died over some damn pork chops. Bullshit. So there you go right there, folks. So you can't we can't wash this thing. Alright, so follow me on over here to my kitchen. We're gonna set this bad boy up. <coughs> oh shit, that thing's long too. I thought I was gonna put it over here. But it looks like looks like this bad boy is gonna have to sit right here over the uh, over the stove. 
And I'm gonna, if, if too much smoke gets going on, I'm gonna have to cut on the uh, exhaust fan. It's gonna screw up the audio for a little bit. So just bear with me. So let's see if we can get this thing plugged in. And I wanna introduce my camera lady. It's my wife's sister, uh, Florentina. She was over there playing on the iPad, trying to play Facebook, talk to her boyfriend, Rick Rick, whatever his name is. And I said, hey, it's time to go to work, girl. So I got her working. So, uh, yeah, so we're going to plug this gentleman in right here. And this little power strip. Look at it. Like a glove. So I'll keep, I'll keep the power off for right now. And folks, come over here. I'm going to show you what I'm working with already. Look, the ladies, the ladies have made a big ass pot of rice in this rice cooker right here. I, I mean, I don't know why they made this much damn rice. I mean, there's uh, five of us here, but they're trying to feed a uh, small army. So we got some uh, silver swan soy sauce. And I want to give a big shout out to Crazy Mike, because Crazy Mike brought a couple of sauces to me straight out of Southern California. This is a Mexico Lindo habanero sauce. And this, this one right here is a, a gringo bandito uh, sauce. So. The ladies may not be cool with that, but I'm gonna put, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit hit some of my pieces of meat with that sauce. Thanks again to Crazy Mike for bringing that to me, bro. Hope you're doing well in the states, by the way. So what happened was earlier, uh, myself and Helen, Helen of Troy, we had to roll down and uh, pick up a few items. I was out of fucking dental floss, and folks. I can't live without dental floss, you know what I mean? I mean, I gotta brush my teeth, floss. So I had to go pick up some dental floss, and on the way back, I stopped off and got a margarita. That's why I was running a little late. But I was smart enough, I told the ladies, I said, hey, look, you ladies sitting around watching the Gallic soap operas, they spent all morning watching the Miss Universe pageant, screaming like hyenas when Miss Philippines won. Shout out to Miss Philippines. Hey, congratulations on your big win. Beautiful, beautiful lady. Anyhow, folks, I told them to chop this shit up. And I said, you know, I feel guilty about stopping for a margarita. But I said, you know, they probably need a little extra time. So when I came back, folks, they had all this stuff prepped. So I want to thank my old lady. I want to thank her mother and uh, her sister Flo for doing that. So let me show you what I got. I chopped up a little cabbage over here fresh from the market tomatoes little hot peppers and folks I love that uh, red bell pepper little green onions we got the red onions the regular onions and some garlic and folks I'm gonna tell you right now if you have a Filipina if you don't know anything about Filipinas they love these red hot dogs okay so we're gonna put some red hot dogs on the grill. And they're delicious, but you know, my, my Filipinas, they love these red hot dogs. And come on over here, baby, a little closer. And show them, uh, we got some pork marinating and a little silver swan soy sauce. And over here, we got some, we got a few pieces of chicken. Two chicken legs. That's uh, the chicken looking a little weak, to be honest with you. That's a skinny, skinny chicken. So this this dish tonight might be called skinny, skinny chicken grill. But the pork's looking okay. A little bit of excess on the fat, but hey, welcome to the Philippines. All right, you buy some pork, it's gonna have a lot of fat on it. That's just the way it is. They love it, and I'll deal with it. Now, big problem. Big problem today. Folks, I got up at 5 o'clock this morning, believe it or not. And like I said in my one video, being a blogger, being a YouTuber, running anything online, okay, yeah, even though I show you pictures of me working in a hammock on the beach, it's still work, okay? This lifestyle is still working. It's a different lifestyle, but basically, instead of sitting in a cubicle, I'm sitting on a balcony, or I'm sitting in a hammock, I'm sitting... Uh, you know, at a bar, but it but it still works. So believe it or not, you know, last few days I've, I've been kicking it. I went to midget boxing a couple nights ago. I'm a fiend for that place. You know, I like the people there. And so when you do that party and you, you get work backed up, you get emails backed up. So this morning I was up at zero five, five this morning, 
and I stared at that damn computer until 5 p.m. And I got good Wi-Fi here, so I was able to get like five or six videos upload, uploaded, some premieres, schedule. I got a lot of work done today, but it's work. I stared at that damn computer for 12 hours, but I'm, I'm feeling good because I was very productive today. The problem was, back to the issue at hand, I ran out of Don Papa. I drank all the beers this morning by noon, then I drank all the Don Papa in the afternoon, and I stopped by for that margarita, and I forgot to stop by and get some beer. So I'm gonna have to check the ref one more time, see if there's some booze in there. If not, I may have to dispatch one of these Filipinas here to run down and get me some beer. That's just the way it is, my friends. All right, so let me let me come over here and see what we got going on, and I'm gonna ask my assistants. Uh, just keep the camera on me, but can I get an assistant over there to uh, take the open these up for me? Yeah, babe, take those over there and op open those up for me, please, so we can continue the video. Folks, in walks the beautiful Helen of Troy, and baby, just say hello to everybody on YouTube. Hello, everybody. Okay, all right. All right, so come on over here, Flo, and let's see if we can get a, get a tune. See if we can get a tune out of this trombone. Oh, shit, that's like a washboard. How much is that dog in the window? Arp, arp. All right, so they are they already cleaned this off. At least I think they did. This thing is pristine. Give it one more little scrub down there. Flick the power on, and let's take it up to 90. Focus on this little thing right here. Got a regulator on this dude. Let's see if it turns off. And yes, it does turn off. So I got a better regulator on this guy. Folks, I'm gonna get this thing hot and see if our little power strip has enough ass. Oh yeah, it's starting to get hot already. It's already open. Okay, so the beautiful Helen of Troy has got these these sauces open. Oh yeah, that's gonna be some deliciousness. I'm gonna put that on my my chicken. Straight out of California, courtesy of Crazy Mike. Take a smell of this guy. Oh yeah, that's the fire right there, folks. That's the that's the fire right there. A little bit of extra here. That seems to be heating up. So if you watch any of my cooking shows, what I recommend, what I always do, I put the meat on first. I don't want no well done meat. That's not how I roll because I don't believe that you know our ancestors started putting meat on on fire on a fire to cook it and they put it on they, 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 they did all this work to make fire right and you mean to tell me they're gonna put that meat on there for like 30 seconds and be like that's enough brother get it off of there that's enough I don't want you know I want it I want it I want it rare that that wasn't gonna happen they put that fucking meat on there and they cooked the shit out of it so it killed all the path the pathogens and the bacteria and the bugs so it didn't kill them so you can have your shit medium rare whatever you want to when I cook meat Folks, I cook the hell out of that shit. I'll make sure that meat is done. Ain't no damn mad cow disease getting through in my kitchen. I promise you that. All right. Ooh, first piece of meat going on there. Listen to that sizzle, my friends. I need some tongs, but that's quite all right. Oh, yeah. This nice sales lady over at SM swore by this little non-stick surface here. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Let's put a little bit on that man right there. He looks a little naked. So does that guy and this dude. That guy right there, he, he's been soaking pretty well. Alright, so I got my chicken right there. Alright, he seems to be going. Mmm, that's smelling good too. Right, let's see if I can get this pork on here without making a big mess. And I'll put that pork right there. I don't know, man. So maybe some people don't like cooking everything together. Oh, that's what I needed right there. Thank you very much, John. That's exactly what I needed, my friends. Exactly what I needed. 
that over there. Let's just get it going. Folks, I want to thank everybody for joining me on my little cooking show. Haven't done a cooking video in quite a while. But this is good, clean fun right here. Especially if I don't I clean up my language a bit and don't use any curse words. You could actually run this video at church, you know. If you have a church luncheon. If you have a nice church luncheon, you could you could run this video on, on how to make some delicious food over at your church. Alright folks, so this meat, this meat's gonna take a while to cook, but I'm gonna go ahead and throw some vegetables on here. Let me get a little, let me get a little soy sauce in the mix. A little bit of soy sauce on there, see if it'll sizzle. Oh yeah, sizzle, sizzle. Rizzle, sizzle. And folks, I gotta turn on the, on the fan. You gotta do it. Hit it on there. I'm gonna load it up. That's just the way it is. Alright, so we're rolling. My spatula over here for these guys. So we'll let that sizzle for a little bit. But I'm gonna tell you right now, the smell coming off that grill, just a little bit of soy sauce, salt, pepper. Smelling absolutely delicious. At the end of it, I will hit my, my piece of chicken with that hot sauce courtesy of crazy Mike. I was gonna live stream this, but I think the audio is an issue. I want to, want to make sure we got halfway decent audio in this little condo here with that fan rolling before I try to even think about doing a live stream. Check this meat out. Oh, yeah. That's a non-stick surface right there. Being no joke. This little grill is rocking on. I'm touching that with metal. It's safe. It's not like that death trap Chinese shit had down there lately. Oh yeah. Mmm, smells good. Oh yeah, that's that's delicious. That cat just sitting in the room getting it on. I'm gonna kind of burn the soy sauce over here on this side. I put too much, too much vegetables. But like I said, if you don't know how to cook, all you do is get in the kitchen and screw shit up. You screw it up long enough, many times you can learn how to cook. The big problem is I put these peppers on here and the ladies don't want to eat the peppers, so I just screwed up all the vegetables. They ain't leaving till six in the morning. Yeah, I should have put a little bit of oil. Put a little bit of oil on there. There we go. Soy sauce didn't do it. I had to get the oil on it. Folks, now, now check this out. There's a big difference between Thai girls and Filipinas. Thai girls in Thailand, they love spicy food. You know, everything in Thailand, not everything, but a lot of stuff is spicy. Filipinas aren't really into spicy food. So what happened, I wasn't paying attention. I dumped all the damn peppers in there, and the whole condo smelled like pepper spray. Everybody's sneezing, act like they can't breathe. 
we got the we got the doors open now. But just be reminded that Filipinas and Thai girls aren't exactly the same. Okay? The Thai girls sit here and cook on this all day. Filipinas act like damn gas chamber in here, you know, and they're just coughing and can't live. So I did make a mistake. The other thing you're gonna learn about Filipinas, Thai girls too. When you're cooking, they're not they're not just gonna stay over there and wait for the food. They're gonna come over here and look and see what you're doing and try to tell you what you're doing wrong. It, it's a group effort trying to tell me how to cook this shit. That's the difference. You know, an American woman, she'll probably go sit down and watch TV and just see what you cook up. But I got four Filipinas right now over here watching me like a hawk. Just trying to make sure I don't cook the meat too much. I don't put too much magic to wrap. Why did I put the peppers in there? Fuck. Hey, you know what? They'll love it. Like I said, I got people coughing up a storm here, folks. They'll live. They'll live and won't have any worry about it. There's plenty of fresh air coming in here. I'm going to tell you this story. It's an old story about some cowboys, right? These cowboys, cowboys on a wagon train, you know, and they had this rule. They didn't have no designated cookie. It was just whoever, you know, drew the unlucky straw to be the cook on this wagon train, on the chuck wagon. So they had a rule that if you complained about the food, it was your turn to be the cook. This one old cowboy, he got tired of cooking. Tired of cooking, so what he did, he put a pound of salt down in the beans. He knew somebody had complained, and then they would have to take over and cook. So he served up them beans with that pound of salt in it. That first, that first old cowboy took a big old bite of it and said, said Man, these beans are salty. And everybody looked over at him because he had complained, and he goes, Just the way I like them. Get the joke, right? Okay. If you complain about my cooking, you get to do the dishes up here in my kingdom. Who wants to complain? Nothing. Okay, that's what I thought. Well, folks, here's the thing about cooking these peppers, right? If you cook these peppers down long enough, it's going to take the fight out of them. We'll take the fight out of these guys, but it was my bad. I was so busy doing the film and I didn't realize I didn't realize I plopped down the whole bowl of peppers in there. But when I'm trying to run a one-man travel show, sometimes shit like that happens. All right, so this thing does have a pretty good little regulator on it. I'm able to uh, manipulate the regulator and the temperature on this thing much better than my, my wok. My wife's over here washing dishes after I gave them a briefing about not making excess noise in the kitchen. Okay? There's no quiet on the set. Nobody understands what that means. Look at that. You ain't never seen no shit like this at Benny Hanna. Ladies. Can you guys do a deep search of the refrigerator, see if there's any type of alcohol in there? Do I have any anything to drink? Yeah. Nothing? Nothing. All right, we'll be going to 7-Eleven here shortly. You want to try I'll take a little bit of Coke, please, in, in my Mickey Mouse cup. Oh, oh shit. Oh, you see that chicken leg jump out over there? Go. It's funny as hell. I got four Filipinas coughing like they just got hit with pepper spray. I mean, it's hilarious. I mean, we got we got the windows open, the doors open. They're gonna live. Like I said, they're not used to this pepper. In Thailand, when you walk past a restaurant, you get hit with that whiff of pepper spray everywhere you go. You get used to it. But they're, they're definitely not used to it here. <clears throat> so far I'm digging this little unit because it's cooking evenly. The regulator works. 
The best thing of all, it's not shocking the piss out of me when I touch it metal on metal. Good piece of gear. A little too hot here. Add a little bit more cabbage. And again, you know, you cook the hell out of these peppers. It, it takes a lot of the fight out of them. Clears everybody's, uh, clears out your sinuses, you know, to be able to breathe better tonight. Everybody will sleep better tonight. So you just keep adding that, that cabbage on there and just cook it down. Little cabbage. You think about it, how many people in the West eat cabbage? When was the last time you ate some cabbage? That's the rest of it right there. A little bit more of that soy sauce on there. Not to waste the soy sauce. Get it on that meat. Alright. <laughs> they ran into the other room. They can't take it. Camera lady's doing a great job, though. She's doing a good job, Flo. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, folks. So after I've uh, smoked everybody out of the condo, look all these vegetables done. Get them off the grill. properties of this man right here so far are exactly like the sales lady said it would be. She says very good quality service. And she was right on the money. Look at that. That's cleaning up real easy. Now I like these little crispies so I'm not going to get rid of them. I like them little crispy. It's a treat for me. And the dark crispies. Look at that, that just cleans up nicely. And easy right there. You get them out of the way. Get these dudes out of here. Let's go with these dogs. The dogs on there. The red hot dog. <laughs> Folks, I may have told you guys one time before that some of these hot dogs, some of these hot dogs, they uh, come wrapped in plastic. And if you're from the West, you may not be used to that. And I don't know if these did or not. I'll have to check with the lady. But I was cooking hot dogs several occasions before I realized that, hey, they come wrapped in this thin plastic. So I cooked up several batches of hot dogs with the plastic still on it until I finally figured it out. Did these, did these have plastic on them? You had to take the plastic off? Yeah. Okay, so these hot dogs here were individually wrapped in plastic. So when you pull them out of the pack, 
you still got to take a knife and cut the plastic off. But if you don't know that, you know in America we just pull a hot dog out of a out of the pack and eat the damn thing. Over here, you pull it out and it's individually wrapped in plastic. I cooked fucking several batches like that before. Somebody said, "Hey, fool, we gotta take the damn plastic off the hot dog." Who knew? These dogs ain't gonna take long at all. But you man, here, put them beautiful vegetables on the table for me, baby. Put them beautiful vegetables on there. <laughs> All right, folks. Take a look at this meat right here. It's starting to brown up nicely. It's starting to look like a champion. A meal fit for a king. It's been very well done. Folks, here's the thing, you know, a lot of people ask me about food safety. You know, you're from the West, you're leaving America, the UK. You're a little bit concerned about eating off the street cart or eating the local food. You're scared you're going to get sick. You know, you watch the National Geographic special and somebody caught a super bug or some bullshit, right? Listen, I'm from the West. I'm still alive. Okay? You're gonna be fine. But, you know, one of the things I do, I cook my meat well done. I don't chance it. I do the same shit in America. If I bought a steak at a Walmart in America, I'm gonna cook that something that's well done. I like the taste, and also I know that I ain't gotta worry about anything in the meat making me sick. That's why our ancestors on his fire. I think if you, if you knew how to make a fire, cook your meat, you survive. Damn. Oh, shit. If you didn't know how to cook your meat, 50-50, whether or not you got some pathogen that killed your ass. So, this may be sacrilegious to some of you, because I'm cooking the shit out of this pork and this chicken. That's the way I roll. Alright, we can give this a few more minutes. A few more minutes, my friends, and we're going to call it done. I mean, hot dogs, chicken, and pork. And then once I get everybody's offloaded, I'm going to hit mine with some hot sauces over there and spice it up even more. All right, folks, I got the meat off the uh, off the grill. All nice and grilled up. I'm going to keep uh, this, this guy right here. He's a little bit more in my opinion. But I'm going to pick these, these two pieces of meat for myself. And... Uh, Hey, ladies, ladies, am I trying to run a cooking show or are we running a bingo parlor? No. Folks, you see what I'm up against? Alright, so I'm gonna hit I'm gonna hit the one piece with the uh, gringo bandito, courtesy of Crazy Mike. Put a little sauce on there. Just to finish it off like this. See how that's gonna turn out. the small piece here with the uh, Mexico Lindo. Let's see what we come out with. Ooh, shit, got it popping too hot. Sizzle that right there a little bit. Sizzle them in those, in those sauces. dogs are almost done. Mm -hmm. Alright, the sauce is no delicious. Just put mine over here. Let me finish up. Alright folks, thanks for watching me cook. In a minute I'm going to show you the presentation over there. Thanks for joining me on my cooking channel. My cooking show on my channel. You're still coughing. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, folks. So I have succeeded in creating a goddamn gas chamber inside the condo. I ran four Filipinas out of here. They're over there in the balcony trying to get some fresh air. All because of these little peppers right here. So I don't don't look at the little crispies over there, but you take a look at that. Okay, vegetables on that little flat part part of the grill. And here's my pieces of meat right here with the uh, Mike sauce that he sent. And there's the pork and chicken for the ladies. We've got a big thing of rice and the old red hot dogs. All right. And we've got an Imperador and Coke and the Mickey Mouse glass. These are pretty good little coffee mugs. Pick them up for like a buck a piece down there. Tundo. Got a nice little lid to it as well. There's a Hello Kitty over there. All the ladies love that shit. My piece of meat look absolutely delicious. And I'm going to give you an honest assessment of this grill. Well, folks, that's a non-stick coating. I mean, I just scrape it off with the thing. That's going to be easy cleanup. This thing's a champion. I'm going to look forward to using this more. It doesn't work out real well when you're trying to, you know, make stir-fry on a flat surface. That's for, that's not a stir-fry surface. You need a wok for that. Next time what I'll do is just cut the vegetables into big pieces and just flip them. But great job on the meat. And I think it's going to be easy clean up. I kind of made a mess because I had too much on here. But I'm digging this little grill. I'm going to get a lot of good use out of that thing right there. I think tomorrow I might put fish and some shrimp on it. And again, this is the sauces I use. This is Gringo Bandito hot sauce. And the Mexico Lindo habanero sauce. And again, that's courtesy of uh, Crazy Mike. Thanks for bringing that. Silver Swan on the soy sauce and just a little oil right there. Hey, but that's the first the uh, first time I use this grill. And I'm digging it. Alright, my friends, so once a once a goddamn condo stops looking like a fucking Cheech and Chong car, we'll get all the ladies back up in here and we're gonna tear it up. I wanna thank everybody for joining me on this little low-key episode on my channel here. You know, just grilling and chilling. A little grill right there we got. And I don't have my wok because the ladies left it in the damn village. They said they didn't have enough room in their suitcase to bring my damn wok. So I got to recover my wok from the village at some point when we make it down, back down to Cebu. If you're not a subscriber, lower right hand corner of your screen right there. A little road sign it says Overstay Road. Do, do me a favor and click that, become a subscriber. And hang out with me on my channel. Hope you enjoyed the cooking show, folks. It's time to eat. Peace out. I'll see you on the next video. I'm going to tell you right now, folks, those vegetables with those peppers is the absolute fire. Now, I'm digging it because I love the spiciness, but I'm going to be honest, that is so hot, I don't think anybody else can eat it. And what I was telling them, I said, look, when you're thinking about sound and camera angles and everything else, I wasn't paying attention when I grabbed those peppers and dumped them in there. That's just part of it. But I am digging it. I am loving it. That is absolutely delicious.